hands to my heart, Lord. Open the eyes to my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. There's a place I have heard. Their words will eat as doth a canker, 
of whom is Hymenus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrown the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. All right, let's have a word of prayer. We'll get started. The Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you bless the message, the word of today. And I pray, Lord, if there's a soul that doesn't know Christ, not for sure, and not 100% confidence of salvation, I pray today will be a day of salvation. But I pray for us Christians, Lord, help us to understand your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If Paul was writing this book here, Paul wrote this book to Timothy, and he was telling Timothy not to be so concerned about trying to find approval of man for his ministry. But also, it also tells us here, is that also, Paul's writing him not to be concerned of how others want you to live as a Christian. And it is important to understand why we do the things we do. But it needs to be the leading of the Holy Spirit and not a man trying to dictate to you. And I want you to hold your place here. Go with me to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, because I want to I want to ask you two questions out of John chapter 8. And just think about these, uh, these couple of questions I want to I want to ask you here. But I want to read it first and I'm going to ask you these questions. Now, John chapter 8, verse 42 to 47. He says this. Jesus said, said, uh, said unto them, If God were your father, ye you would love me. For if, as if for I proceed forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father will ye do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not, which of you uh, convince me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words, and ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. I'll pose two questions that you right here. First one, if ye claim to be saved by the blood only, then God is your Father. Amen. Okay? Ye should hear God's voice through His written word, and be obedient to God's word, living holy and righteous life, love His word, Love to pray and love to be in God's house. That's your first question you ask yourself. The second question I want you to ask yourself is this. If you died right now, can you confidently, 100%, without a shadow of a doubt, say that your heaven is your home and only by the Christ, by the blood of Christ? Amen. You understand this, what I read here, you understand what it says here. If you cannot say 100%, that heaven is your home. The Bible clearly says your father is the devil. I know that's some kind of harsh word sometimes telling you, but you just read it with me. And, and, I, and I'm saying this because the word of God draws a line in the sand. And there's no middle ground in this discussion with God. It's either you're on one side or the other side. Either you're, either you're saved in the blood of Christ or you're not. This is one of the two places you're at. Either you're following God and saved and you're following God because you are saved or you're not saved and you reject Christ and you still don't want the blood. Well, then who are you following? That's what the Bible is clearly saying today. And I want to put that out to you today because... What these verses that we're going to just talk about here, back here in 2 Timothy, if you go back to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and flip back there, what I'm going to explain in these verses, and I'm hoping to explain this in the verses here, that is dealing with something here. He's deal these verses are dealing with people 
for misinterpreting the Word of God. These verses that are here in Timothy are dealing with people who are misusing the Word of God. It's dealing here with people who are falsely teaching the Word of God. That's what it's dealing with here, these verses here. It's God's teaching, not man's teaching. That's what is truthfully here. And what I want to tell you right now is that I want everyone to have a Bible in their lap. If you need a Bible, I will give you a Bible to put in your lap. What I want you to see is what I'm seeing. I want you to take notes. I want you to, to, to see that I am accurate in what I'm teaching and preaching. I encourage you to read your Bible. I encourage it to why do I encourage you? I encourage you to read your Bible so that you are more aware of what's in the Word of God, of what is truth. And if I am telling you truth, I'm just a man. I can tend to err. But the Word of God is pure, infallible. It's without error. And the, and the trouble that Paul is trying to tell Timothy here, there are people out there that will misuse the Word of God. There are preachers out there and they are teaching falsely. There's religion that's out there teaching falsely. And in the first verse he says there, in the first two words, he says, but shun, I'm sorry, but shun profane. Now that word, that word shun there, what does that mean? That word shun means to avoid and ignore. He says, avoid and ignore those who are falsely preaching. Ignore and shun and profane and avoid those false religions that are out there. That's what it's saying right there to you. Satan wants to deceive you. And you gotta understand, you've got a real enemy out there, the devil. He wants to deceive you. And it's and it's going to. Uh, many religions out there. Well, we're in that, we're, and Pastor talked about this morning in Sunday school. Many religions will not require you to bring a Bible to the service. They'll just tell you, or they'll put it up on the screen, or they'll just kind of give you some sort of little sermonette of their opinion out there. They won't encourage you to read your Bible. They said, don't read your Bible, we'll tell you what you need to know. Religions out there and pastors out there will will use multiple Bible versions which will cause you confusion. And and, and and the thing about confusion, Satan loves confusion because it keeps you from truth. Amen. Now the Bible, and I'll, I'll, I'll read you a verse here. 1 Corinthians 14.33, if you want to write it down, but it says this, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. I like that last part of it. It says, as in the churches. God says there should not be confusion in the church. And there should not be confusion of what Bible the preacher is about ready to preach out of. There should not be any confusion in the church. Now, you preach out of one Bible, one version, and it's only that Bible you preach out of. Now, the research, and this is the where I, I get into, the research shows, and, and, I, and I say this too, and I kind of put this out here too, many do not know what Bible version or why they read a certain Bible version. Many times I hear people will say, well, I read this Bible because it's easy for me to read. They guess, well, if, I, if it's so easy, it's just because it has the word Bible, Holy Bible on the front, it must be the complete Bible. That's a lie of the devil straight from hell. Um, it is the biggest lie the devil, one of the biggest lies the devil has. Any updates, any changes, or any revision to the Bible, it becomes corrupt. Okay? Research shows that many of these translations that, that, that are out there right now, 
come from a corrupted Bible or corrupted manuscript. Research shows that. But see, most people do not do the research of why they read the certain Bible. If you read your, if you do your research of what Bible you're picking up and find out where it comes from, you throw it in the trash as quick as you put it in your hand. Now, the research, I have, I have many books on all this stuff. If you ever want to know more, I got, I got probably about these many books full of why. And I'll tell you why, and I can give you a reason. The research shows, and I'll tell you why, the research shows that the King James Bible is the only Bible that is that has not been revised, has not been updated, has not been changed since it's been originally translated from the Greek received text. Has not. In over 400 years, has not. Now, would I say that because the reason I'm putting this here, because I'm going to tell you the truth here. Since Jesus' day, since Paul's day, since the 12 disciples' day, and since the prophets of the Old Testament, they all had to deal with false writing, false teachers, and false prophets, false teachers. Since that, that, they had to deal with that, because the writings have said that. And, and I'll tell you what, it has not changed today. If they can, if they can fool you into believing the lie, then Satan has won. Has sent you to hell if you're not saved, or has ruined you as to be a Christian to believe a lie and live a lie. Now, the reason why I put this on here is because these words, if you read here, when I read these four verses here, these are harsh words and it is a harsh warning to the church. And, and we need to understand this. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm, 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 I'll tell you what, I'm pretty hard on this area here because, the, because when you start preaching a lie and you start teaching a lie, you affect someone for eternity. That's a big deal. Either you're going to spend all eternity in heaven or you're going to spend all eternity in hell. There's no middle ground. And you can't get up to heaven and say you want to change your mind or say, well, I didn't know that, so Lord, let me in by ignorance. God's not going to do that. Because we got the word of God right here. Now, if, if you look at here, just hold your place here, but go to chapter 1 here, look at verse 20. It's just one page. It's just right above them where you're at here. In 1 Timothy, just move a couple of pages over to 1 Timothy 1.20. And in the 1 Timothy, the one first book that Paul wrote to Timothy, he said the same thing here in verse 20. In 1 Timothy 1.20, he said, Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may not, they said, what, to learn something. What? To not blaspheme. Meaning that they are misusing the word of God and blaspheming the word of God. And he also, when he when he came back here, he talked about Hymenaeus back here in chapter 2 of 2 Timothy. He talked about Hymenaeus, how that he twisted the word of God and said the resurrection has already passed. And you guys missed the boat. And he said that's a blasphemous thing. When anybody teaches false doctrine, that is blasphemy. And God holds a great, great, uh, uh, you want to say, holds his word in a high regard. And that same token, if someone misuses the word of God, he holds it in high regard of an abomination to do that. And, and when, I, so I, when I'm looking at here and I, and, I, and I see these scriptures, because I've been preaching through 2 Timothy here, and I, as I go through here and hitting this, you know, and it tells us that the word of that, that these people that preach the word of God, and he is, if you go back with me here now, back to 2 Timothy, go back with me to 2 Timothy, because I want to show you something here. As you go back into 2 Timothy, and verse 17, he also talks about Hymenaeus here also. But he says this when I want to point out a word that he uses here in 17. So 2 Timothy. 2.17, he says, And their word was, was says, Will he as doth a canker, a canker. And he, and he said, Hymenaeus again, but he also added another guy, Philetus. 
Why? Well, Philemon, uh, Philetus was drawn away by Alexander and Hymenaeus, and now they got a third guy believing a lie. But that word canker there, that word canker by a false teacher means a painful sore or gangrene. That's what that word canker means. So he says the word of God acts like a painful sore or like a gangrene that eats away at your flesh. So when false teachers, what they do is they'll eat away at your spirit or at your soul and to a point where it destroys it. And so that's why Paul points them out in strong words in this area to be careful of. Here in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, it says this, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. There is a day that many will fall away from the faith. The Bible predicted. There's going, to be a many day, there's going to be a day when Satan is stronger today in deceiving you. If you haven't been paying attention, you've been held holding your head in the sand. You haven't been paying attention. So, Satan has been predominantly more and more in society today. Amen. They're in the school right now. they got clubs in the school right now. Satanic cults have club school in there. They have now they they've convinced uh, companies to promote their uh, ungodly satanic stuff that's out there. The, the Target, Budweiser, and all that stuff that's out there, all those companies out there doing that stuff. And you don't understand that what's that doing? We got the pride flag and all that stuff and, and if you don't understand that pride flag only has six colors on it. The rainbow has seven. Seven is the number of perfection. Six is the number of man. Now we figure out where that goes from. Okay? Now, this is, this is something that's seriously going on here. Christian, we need to wake up here and smell the coffee. I had my two cups this morning too, so I was good. All right? So, hey, we need to smell the coffee here. This is a weird battle going on right here. And this battle has not gone away, and it will not go away until the Lord takes us home. Satan has stepped his gears up in this process. If you haven't, he's stepped it up. Because he knows the time is getting closer. And if, he's, if I'm going down, I'm taking all of you with me, he says. And if I can't take you to hell, Christian, I'm going to ruin your life as best I can. I'm going to ruin your family. I'll ruin your marriage. I'll ruin your kids. I'll do all I can to ruin you. That's what Satan's plan is. We need to read the Word of God so we can prevent this. This is so important here. And, 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 and Christian, this is the message that we need to get out. That there is a real adversary, the devil, that's going to take you to hell. If you do not fight through the blood of Jesus Christ to save your soul for eternity, he's going to take your soul to hell. Look at me in 1 Corinthians here, at verse 4. 1 Corinthians 4. 1 Corinthians 4. Now, 1 Corinthians 4, 1 through 5, we're in this area here. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm, trying to, I'm trying to build a basis here for a reasoning here. We need to be a strong Christian and we need not to allow the influences of the world to change that. But often Christians, we're letting the influence of the world change our Christianity. Look at here in chapter 4 here and verses 1 through 5. Let no man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the manifold, uh, uh, stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in the steward that a man be found, what? Faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self. 
For I know nothing of my, of my but there's nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby, so hereby justified? But he that judgeth me is the Lord. The Lord judges you. He will always judge you. But I am justified in the blood of Jesus Christ. What's he, judge, what's he judging? Are you living for Jesus Christ? Are you living according to the word of God? Or are you just playing a game? You won't lose your salvation, but he's, you're still his child. I, 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 I heard this quote, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll read it to you. It says, God loves you as you are. Now, uh, you heard me say that. I get you. Yeah. But the quote goes on and says this. But as a saint in his love, he will not leave you as you are. He will not leave you in your sin. There's the difference there. See, a lot of the false religions or the feel me goods churches that tickle your ear, they say, God is love, He loves you as you are, and leaves it alone. That doesn't go anywhere else. But when you read this, as you read here, it tells us that we are ministers of Christ in verse 1, and we are stewards. Stewards is someone who managed the affairs of another. So we manage the affairs of the mysteries of God. That's the word of God. But it also goes on and says, you are to, it is required, it didn't say option, required, command, that you are to be good stewards and be faithful stewards. That's a command. That's not an option. How do I be a faithful steward? The Word of God shows me how to do this. And so when we leave, when we as Christians and understand this, yes, we're all sinners. I agree. We're all sinners. And I'm not perfect just like anybody else is not perfect. I make mistakes. But I do not live in my mistakes. I do not live in the sin of the world. As a Christian, the sin of the world should bother you. It should make you upset. It should grieve you to a point that you're going to do something to fix it. Or, as the Bible says, that you will quench the Holy Spirit, live in your sin, live destruction, and then Satan is going to come up and laugh in your face all the way. Yeah, you might go to heaven, but you're going to have him laugh in your face all the way. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. My resolve is Satan's going to have to kill me to make me stop. And I wish he would, too, because he'd send me home. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm in this world. But if he leaves me here, all I'm going to say, Lord, I'm not going to stop unless Satan kills me, unless you take me home. But I am going to live for Christ. I'm going to love Christ. I'm going to love his Bible. I'm going to love to pray. I'm going to love to be in church. And I'm going to love to be Christ-like and be holy and righteous. I'm going to love it. Amen. The best I can. <laughs> the best I can. And if I mess up, I have an advocate up in heaven to say, Lord, I messed up. He says, yeah, I know. I'm glad you recognize that. What do you want to do about it? Well, Lord, could you help me to figure this out? And God says, praise the Lord. I will help you to figure it out. That's really what it comes out to be Christian. You know, and, and I'm Christian. It's important. Ephesians uh, 2 2 says this. It says, We're in, in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world. Now, hey, I didn't get saved until I was 27. And I was a hellion then. And I was in the Navy for 10 years prior to me getting saved. I walked according to the course of this world. It says, According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. I'm not a child of disobedience. I'm a child of God. Amen. Okay? If you're saved in the blood of Christ, you are a child of God, not a child of disobedience. Then don't live in disobedience. Children, you're a child of God. Do not live in disobedience. Easiest thing to say. The Bible is pretty clear in this area. Second thing here, we're going to move on here. The second thing here is that many have erred from the truth. Many have erred from the truth. If you go back to 2 Timothy 2, the reason I know this, I had a, a good pastor friend of mine, and he was a good pastor. He was a great mentor to me when I newly got saved. Great man, but he erred from the faith several years later. He started listening to some false teacher on the internet. 
and took him off to the left field. He was a great man, a very great, uh, great preacher, but he listened to the wrong advice. The only advice I listen to is the Word of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's it. That's it. And I will check up on every preacher, and if you're wrong, I will not listen to you again. And I guarantee the same thing you ought to do with me. Because the truth is truth. Okay? You need to make sure you know truth. That's why I say study. The reason to study is that you know truth. And so you make sure when you hear truth, you know what truth is. But there's so much lie out there. There's a, oh, there's a, there's a whole truck full of lies out there. And it's just lies from the devil. And he wants to be the father of life. 18, 19 says this. Who concern, concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrown the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God uh, standeth sure, having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and, the, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And iniquity means sin. What is sin? The Bible says sin is the transgression of the law of God. Now, there's a lot of people who have said the resurrection had already passed. There has been people recently in history, uh, uh, let's see, the guy there, Pastor Campbell, back in 2012, said the resurrection has already passed. Oh, the resurrection is going to happen. And it was around, I think it was around November of 2012. He said the church is going to be resurrected. Christ is going to come back. And I can't remember. I remember the second day he changed it because it didn't happen that day. <laughs> How did it happen that day? He says, well, I'm still here. That's why I didn't happen. <laughs> so he moved it off. And I think it was December 21, 2012 was when he moved it off to because he, oh, I miscalculated. How did you miscalculate? Well, it's because I'm still here. Okay, look, at the only reason I know I'm going is because of the blood of Christ. Amen. Okay, yeah. that's it. Amen. All right? That's the only way you know. But I cannot put a date or a time to it. But he said the resurrection was going to happen on that day. I'm telling you, there's false teachers and prophets today doing the same thing. And you've got to be careful because if you do not, if you're not careful, you will be led astray. And believe, and then what happens? He will ruin you or take you to hell, one or the other. 1 John 2, 18 says this. Little children. Now, when he says little children in the Bible, he's talking about saved Christians. He says, little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that the Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. Whereby we know that it is the last time. He's saying today there are many antichrists. Or I say there are many workers of the devil that are in churches preaching and having religion. Or churches, whatever you want to call it. However, they have their false religions out there. There are many, many antichrists out there. How do you know? Well, the word of God determines if you're right or wrong. This is where it is right here. If you don't, if you're preaching and your church or your religion does not line up with the word of God, you are an antichrist. I know that's a strong word. And I know maybe some preachers or religions will get mad at me, but I'm going to tell you, this is where the truth is. And if, and if, if Paul already wrote, wrote out there, there's so many antichrists out there. And if he writes out there, this is actually written by the apostle John. But if Paul also warned Timothy in two books about two men that are teaching blasphemous stuff, I'm telling you the same thing today that they're telling you right then. And many of the prophets back then warned of a lot of antichrists at those times. Look at Mark 13. Mark 13. Mark chapter 13. Now Mark 13, 21 to 27... Mark 13, 21 to 27 here says this. It says, And then, if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, here is there, believe him not. 
For false Christ and false prophets shall arise and shall show signs and wonders to do. If it were possible to even the elect. Now, that elect means saved people. And it says here, to take ye heed, uh, but take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days, after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers of, that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with great power and glory and then shall he say send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost parts of the earth to the uttermost parts of heaven so he tells us before all this comes and before jesus comes in the cloud there are many false christs out there jesus if you got a red letter edition jesus taught this also there are false Christs out there. If Jesus teaches it, his disciples teaches it, we need to teach it today. Amen. What do you believe? What do you understand according to the word of God about your salvation? What do you understand about the word of God about you to be a Christian, a saved, born again Christian? What, is it, what does it mean? What does the Bible say to you how you are to live for Christ? Do you know how to live for Christ and to, and to be a good steward of Jesus Christ? How do you know that? The Word of God shows us, not man. You come here, I will preach you the Word. I will proclaim you the Word. Because God has called me to proclaim His Word, just like He did with the prophets and the teachers and the preachers, to proclaim and to be a shepherd to you, to guide you in those areas. But to follow Jesus Christ is where I'm telling you to go. I'm not telling you to follow me. I'm pointing you to Christ and say, follow him. That makes a difference from a lot of religion. A lot of religions say, follow their religion. Oh, well, you've got to stay in that religion. You've got to stay here according to this denomination. You've got to stay with this church. Or you've got to follow this pastor, this big name pastor. You've got to follow him. No, I'm telling you to follow Jesus. Amen. I'm pointing you to Christ. Amen. Because he's the one ultimately is going to judge you. And you need to know what he's going to do for you. And when I get this thing and say, and I and I pray this also to tell you this: you understand Satan and, and the unsaved unsaved world wants to overthrow your faith. They do. That's his full purpose here is to overthrow your faith. And how do you know that? Well, has he taken you out of church? Have you missed church for any length of time? Hmm. Well, he won. Have you stopped praying and reading your Bible? Well, then Satan won. Are you living in sin that you know you're not supposed to be living in? And you continue doing it. Satan has won. See, there's your, there's your hypocrisies right there. I'm not letting Satan win. But I have determined that. I have. You must determine that. And then you must work hard to not let Satan win in your family. How's your marriage? Ooh. If it's rocky, Satan's won. How's your kids? Mm. Are they safe? Mm. I don't know. Satan's won. This is a serious fight that we have to fight for. And we need to be on guard in this area here. Here in 2 Timothy 1, 1 5 here. We'll wrap it up here shortly here. Go back to 2 Timothy chapter 1, 1 through 5. And see what he says here. In chapter 2, 2 Timothy. And in that same chapter, look at verses 1 through 5. He says something here. He says this. He says, Though therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Though therefore endure a hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that war entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for the masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. 
See, God has says this is the thing. All right, Christian? This is the thing. And it gets down seriously in this area here. And I want to put it down seriously in this area here. Christian, if you've been saved for any length of time, you should have been studying the Bible enough to a point to teach somebody else. If you've been saved for any length of time, you should be teaching your kids, your spouse, you should be teaching whoever you get your hands on and tell them about the blessed hope of Jesus Christ. You should have been doing this, Christian. That's what he says that we should. You should be teachers by now. That's verse 1. tells you you should be teachers by now. If you're not teaching anyone, Satan is one and taking you away from that, that thing you're called to do. Okay? He tells you not to entangle yourselves with the affairs of this life. Meaning, if the things of this life is more important to you than Jesus Christ, Satan has won. Because then God is not that important. Church is not that important. The Bible is not that important. Praying is not that important. And so Satan has won. So I don't go to church often. I go when I feel like it or if I'm awake or whatever. I, or I don't read my Bible. Well, I skip the day. No big deal. Man, I haven't read it in the week. I'll get it next week. I'll start Monday because Monday is a good day to start everything, right? So I'll start it on Monday. I'll read it on Monday. And because we do not have the word of God is strong in you, Satan has won. See, the Word of God makes us capable because we give the Holy Spirit what He needs to help teach us and guide us. That's why we read the Word of God. But if you don't read the Word of God, guess what? The Holy Spirit does not have enough to teach you to bring back to your remembrance and say, hey, do you remember you read this? Do you remember the pastor said this? Hey, do you remember this in Bible study we taught this? Hey, it applies here. It needs to be done here. And, and the Holy Spirit says, this is it right now. See, if you can't say according to the Word of God, I know what I was shadow of doubt today. I know I'm going to heaven. I know my name's written in the book of life. If you can't say that today, your father is the devil. And the, your father, the devil, you will do his bidding. And the father, your devil, will take you to hell. But if you can say confidently, 100%, my name is in the book of life, I know I'm saved by the blood of Christ, your Father is God. Amen. And God will take you to heaven. 